Hello everyone and welcome to the dev stream summary where we're going to talk about the contents of the upcoming reinforced update as well as future content that's being worked on for Chivalry 2. This video will be labeled in chapters to make your life easier. Probably the most important announcement, the reinforced update will be releasing in early October. The initial deadline for summer has ended and so the update is being delayed to early October. The implementation of cross-platform parties will also be excluded from this update. The developers actually were going to delay this update even further than October, but they decided that it was unnecessary and so they'll omit the cross-platform parties from this update and add them in a future update. They did not exactly specify when in October the reinforced update will release, but they said early October, so October 31st. There is a new upcoming map, the Grand Hippodrome of Askandir. This is a team deathmatch and free-for-all map which the devs claim is the Tenosian equivalent of Tournament Grounds, a fast, frantic, bloody combat arena with horses. Unsurprisingly, no hippos. Lore slash narrative wise, the map takes place in Askindir, and the lighthouse from Askindir can even be seen in the background of some of the images that they showed off during the stream. There is a new weapon, the Qatar. While we don't have much information, these were described as the first dual wielding weapon. This weapon has been designed for the Ambusher specifically, and will accommodate anyone who is a fan of the fist fighting moveset. The devs claim this weapon is best suited towards those with good footwork. The most interesting aspects of the Qatar to me is that just like fists, it does not interrupt on successful attacks. Besides the special, of course. The jab will also be replaced with the headbutt animation, which is pretty cool because headbutt does way more damage than jab. These are very interesting aspects of the weapon, and I'm sure there will be tons of goaded clips out. The Ambusher is receiving a new passive perk called Executioner. Now, the Ambusher will not be able to down enemies, making it to where all interactions where the enemy's health reaches zero a kill. This is a massive buff, especially since Ambusher can only use low damage weapons, which down often, as well as the throwing knives. There will be new Tenosian armor in this update. The devs insinuated that there will be at least two armor sets in the upcoming update, but they only showed off a single one for the Tenosia Knight. We also got official acknowledgement regarding the shared cosmetics of Tenosia and how it was a failed experiment. Although I don't blame them for attempting something new, it's a mistake that I wouldn't make, and I was very critical of them at the time. If you're unaware of what I'm talking about, basically, Tenosia's faction only has two armor sets shared across all four classes. The heavy armor, which is shared between the knight and the footman, and the light armor, which is shared between the vanguard and the archer. This meant that you wouldn't be able to distinguish whether an enemy was an archer or a vanguard, which is silly. This was incredibly disappointing to me, because the game does such a great job at distinguishing each class from armor alone, despite the fact that every class has the same hitbox size. So to see Tenosia be the only faction to not conform to this standard was very sad. I'm glad that they're going back in the right direction, and they have my respect. The Halloween seasonal event is returning. Dark Forest and Rudhelm will be decorated with spooky stuff. Jack-o'-lanterns and more can be expected. Newly added Halloween versions of Desert and Warden Glade will also be a thing. Wearable pumpkin helmets are making a return. Also, there will be new season cosmetics purchasable with crowns. The developers aren't willing to share what it looks like just yet, but it seems like it'll be a helmet with three variations, one for each faction. Premium cosmetics aren't too new to chivalry, existing in the original game long ago, so I'm not totally surprised. Team balance slash team swapping is being addressed. Team balance restrictions will now begin at the start of a match in matchmaking games. What this means is the feature will be omitted from the server browser servers to allow competitive players to arrange games easier. Thanks, Torn Banner. Other than that, exploits that bypass team switching limitations have been resolved, and the ability to switch teams has been restricted unless the opposite team has two less players on it. Basically, your swap has to actually make the teams more even. Ghost hits with projectiles are being improved. Throwing projectiles seemingly aren't doing damage sometimes, and it's really annoying. Oh man, I missed. Oh, you what? missed. Huh? What? I didn't miss! I'll, dude, I'll clip it. This also includes hitting someone's shield on their back, but not getting audio feedback. The developers claim this is being improved. Is it fixed? I have no idea. They use flowery language and didn't necessarily claim the issue is gone, so I don't know. Regardless, that's what they said. A massive amount of general fixes and balance changes are on their way. I'm just going to shotgun you with all the issues being tackled. 
In true Chivalry 2 fashion, when the update releases, it is totally possible that these issues won't actually be fixed. But there is an attempt. As Jen said, and I quote, We never say completely until it's proven. The bug that prevents you from not using a helmet is being fixed. An issue that causes you to spawn under Falmire is being fixed. Peasants will now spawn in Courtyard as they did before. You will no longer spawn with the wrong shield on some consoles. Mason and Agatha heraldries will now be added to free-for-all customization options. Spear and one-handed spear are being nerfed. They won't give exact numbers yet, but combo speed and knockback are being reduced for both. Highland Sword is being nerfed. The overhead and slash are having their damage reduced, along with the wind-up having its speed slowed down. Additional measures are being taken to combat hackers. They didn't want to give specifics so as to make it easier for the hackers to circumvent these changes. Some things not mentioned are also being worked on, such as desynced attacks and combat exploits. The devs also made a call to action, requesting that players send in clips and broken stuff as often as possible. The queue set up on the main play screen is also being rearranged, which most likely involves the Tenosian Invasion queue finally officially being removed. Console specific changes are on their way through this update as well. The console players of Chivalry 2 continue to remain as second class citizens, but the update seems to have some good changes coming along. Next-gen consoles will be receiving Field of View. If you weren't aware, console players cannot change their first-person Field of View. Now, next-gen consoles will be able to. Sorry, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. However, last-gen consoles will still be receiving some good news. For all console ports, gamma settings are being added and same attack feints are now possible. If you weren't aware, controller was not capable of same side feints. If you don't know what a same side, also known as same attack, feint is, it's basically where you faint from one attack to the alternate version of said attack. That's all the news I can offer you from the dev stream. Be sure to share your thoughts, concerns, and questions below. The official patch notes for this update will also be linked in the description. Have a great day.